Our trip started on Friday, June 7th. We were scheduled to fly out in the afternoon. It was a relaxing day and we got to the airport early. We were able to upgrade our seats so we were able to take it easy in the airport lounge. We landed in Amsterdam at 8 in the morning. Bart and Henke are Brenda's cousins and they live in Delsai which is north about 3 hours. We rented a car and started on our journey. It was rainy and cloudy for most of the day, but we made the best of it. We stopped at a few attractions, but the weather was not cooperating, so we continued on our drive. We stopped in Groningen for a couple of hours to stretch our legs. It was a Saturday and the town market was in full gear. It's always a great experience to wander through these markets. Lots of fish, vegetables, and of course, cheese! After stopping for lunch, it was back on the road to Delsai. The rain had stopped and the sun was trying to get out. It was a nice relaxing drive through the country. We were hoping to arrive around 3 p.m. Meeting up with Bart and Henke was great. It's been many years in between visits. They wanted to take us into town as there was a Pinksterin festival going on over the weekend. A converted church made a great place to stop for a drink. We stopped at a farmer's market. All kinds of crafts, food, music, and displays. The Van Der Veen name will live on in the cheese business. Brenda is a natural. Along the way, we stopped for coffees and treats at different locations. <laughs> okay. Go for it, go for it. Onions everywhere. <laughs> We made our way back to the airport in Amsterdam and then flew to Basel, Switzerland. We settled into our hotel and just relaxed for the evening. The next morning, we traveled to the ship and unpacked in our room. The ship offered a walking tour of Basel for the afternoon and since we didn't have anything planned, we decided to go. It was a nice start to the holiday. Basel is a city on the Rhine River in northwest Switzerland. The city borders with France and Germany. Its medieval old town centers around Marktplatz, dominated by the 16th century red sandstone town hall. We finished our tour and went back to the ship to meet up with Paul and Diane. We had a nice dinner and then up on the top deck as we sailed away down the Rhine River. The next day we did a tour of Colmar. Colmar is a town in the Grand East region of northeastern France, near the border with Germany. Its old town has cobblestone streets lined with half-timbered medieval and early Renaissance buildings. The Gothic 13th century St. Martin Church stands in the central square. The city is on the Alsace wine route and the local vineyards specializing in Riesling and Gerzeminder wines. Colmar is the third largest city in the Alsace region with a population of 70,000 people. Over the centuries, Colmar has either been occupied by the Romans, the French, or the Germans multiple times. 
The boat was docked at Brieche, population 15,000. It was a short hike up to the top of the city where there were great views of the Rhine and the surrounding area. Up on the deck before dinner, having a few drinks and watching the world go by, it was perfect. After a nice breakfast, we boarded a small tour boat for a trip through Strasbourg, France. Strasbourg is the capital city of the Grand East region, formerly Alsace, in northeastern France. The population of Strasbourg is 180,000 people. It's also the formal seat of the European Parliament and sits near the German border, with culture and architecture blending German and French influences. Its Gothic Notre Dame Cathedral features daily shows from its astronomical clock. We did a foodie walking tour which was amazing with all kinds of good stuff. After dinner we lounged around in the lounge, had a few drinks and enjoyed the company on the boat. Today we are off to Heidelberg, Germany. It was about a 30 minute bus ride to the town. We signed up for the walking tour which is always very educational. Heidelberg is a town on the Neckar River in southwestern Germany with a population of 160,000 people. It's known for Venerable Heidelberg University, founded in the 14th century. The Gothic church towers over the Café Line Town Square, the sandstone ruins of Heidelberg Castle, a noted example of Renaissance architecture, stands above the town. Rudesheim, Germany is a town in the Rhine Valley. It has a population of 10,000 inhabitants. Rudesheim is known for winemaking, especially of Riesling wines. From the boat we took the tourist train which gives a tour of the town and takes you up to the town center. Nearby Siegfried's mechanical music cabinet is a museum of automated musical instruments. This is a very cool place. I had no idea how creative people can be. Another thing that Rudesheim is famous for is the coffee. Special coffee. Really good. The Rhine River Valley is known for the castles. It was an afternoon of cruising on the river and picking out all the ancient castles. It's amazing just to be there and see all the sights. The castles and all the small towns along the river. We ended up at Koblenz.
Koblenz is a German city situated on both banks of the Rhine, where it is joined by the Moselle River. Koblenz was established as a Roman military post by around 18 BC. Its name originates from the Latin, meaning confluence of the two rivers. 115,000 people call Koblenz home. The fountain of the spitting boy was a highlight of the town center. Next stop on our tour is Berncastle, Germany, a quaint little town of 6,500 people. Bern Castle is in the heart of the Moselle wine-making country. Back on the boat, we get to see all of the vineyards firsthand. The Moselle is much less traveled and the cruise is very calming. Couldn't ask for better weather. Hackenberg, one of the largest fortifications of the Maginot Line, is part of the fortified sector of Belay. It is situated 20 kilometers east of Thionville. Before World War II, it was considered a showpiece of French fortification technology. Its garrison was one of the last French units to surrender after the June 1940 armistice. In 1944, under German occupation, it was in action against American forces advancing along the Maginot Line. It resisted for three days before artillery bombardment from the rear forced the Germans to evacuate. Thionville, France has a population of 40,000 people. Always a nice dinner at the end of the day. Luxembourg City is the capital city of the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg and the country's most populous city with 120,000 people. Luxembourg is a very wealthy country and is ranked as having the second highest per capita GDP in the world. The city has developed into a banking and administrative center. Luxembourg is also one of the de facto capitals of the European Union alongside Brussels and Strasbourg. Trier, Germany is a southwestern German city in the Moselle wine region near the Luxembourg border. The population of Trier is 115,000. Founded by the Romans, it contains several well-preserved Roman structures like the Porta Negra Gate, the ruins of Roman baths, an amphitheater just outside the center, and a stone bridge over the Moselle River. The archaeological museum displays Roman artifacts. Among Trier's many Catholic churches is Trier Cathedral. Karl Marx was born in Trier in 1818 and has been honored with a statue. Bilstein, population 145, is a municipality belonging to a kind of collective. It is in the Kokumzell district. It has a small town center with cafes and shops, great for a quick stop. We made our way back to the Rhine River and continued downstream to Cologne. Cologne, a 2,000 year old city spanning the Rhine River in western Germany, is the region's cultural hub with a population of a million people. In Cologne, Kolsch is traditionally served in a tall, thin, cylindrical glass. The server carries 12 beer, a circular tray resembling a crown or wreath. Instead of waiting for the drinker to order a refill, 
the server immediately replaces an empty glass with a full one, marking a tick on the coaster under the glass. If the drinker does not want another refill, he or she places the coaster on top of the empty glass and pays for the number of beers marked on the coaster. Back in Amsterdam, we had one final day for a couple of tours. Amsterdam is the Netherlands capital known for its artistic heritage, elaborate canal system, and narrow houses with gabled facades, legacies of the city's 17th century golden age. Its museum district houses the Van Gogh Museum, works of Rembrandt and Vermeer at the Rijksmuseum. The population of Amsterdam is 870,000. We did a tour of a heritage cultural park, cheese making, Dutch windmills, shoe making are all highlights. The windmills are an amazing feat of engineering. <laughs>